Hi guys, this is the first video um, about the AID module. I think I'm going to be able to cover both the observations and the and the un unreal bit and then the unreal setup in one video. So let's 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 have a look. So why I'm calling it AI module rather than eyes module? Well, the the idea here is being able to come up with a module that you can apply to as many eyes as you want, not necessarily a biped. So again, the idea is the module that it's a bit more abstract and versatile. So we're gonna look at one single eye and then we're gonna try to replicate the setup to uh, you know, an additional eye. So the first thing I wanna point out is as, as usual, uh, depending from the style of the character and you know, the geometry that you've been given with, I may come in, a mer in many different kind of style. The first one, the most simple one, is the one that we're going to look at is a perfect sphere although this is not anatomically correct most of the time you will receive a geometry that is a perfect sphere where the the pivot of the object is actually in the middle another way I've seen you know for more realistic creature you can have a one single shell geometry but it includes the deformation around the cornea and pupil area this is a more realistic shape of the eye where it bulges out and in, in this one you have to be careful because the pivot, you want to be able to preserve the pivot in, in the spherical side of it, in the, let's say in the bounding box that represent a, a, a sphere. And the reason is other, if you shift the pivot around, this geometry will start bulging. bulging. If, I, if I move the pivot forward like that, this geometry will not rotate properly. And most of the time the eyes is something that does rotate around the pivot. The third way, um, you you may you know depending on, on the project, you may receive an eye. It's basically having a more realistic um, structure where the eye is actually covered by a, a shell that is transparent to pick up highlights, and the actual eyeball geometry is inside. And this is again, this is even more realistic. And I've seen setups where the where the actual iris and the and the pupil are. are different geometries all together so what we're gonna say does work for all of these but just so you're aware you know this if, if you receive a geometry that, that looks slightly different you may have to you know tune a little bit the pivot but overall the, the idea is always the same um, now in a, in a in a standard kind of geometrical approach an eye can be you know can can increase the size of the iris and the pupil and this is the kind of control you want to give to the animators and m sometimes this this control is achieved by having a joint that scales a little bit or uh, via blend shapes with with edge loops that slide uh, along the surface in this case because we're going to jump into unreal in unreal i've used i i stole the shader from meta humans and applied to my sphere so those controls, the, the, you know, the size of the iris and the size of the pupil and the overall shading of the eye is completely described by the shader. We're not going to hook up into the shader with control rig yet. We need to discuss, we need to um, learn a bit more of control rig before we jump into that. But so you know, the reason why I'm not going to implement this, the eye iris pupil shape today is because this this um, effect will be achieved through material attributes rather than geometric attributes. So what do we need to do with the eye? The eye is a, usually a surface that revolves around the pivot. When you have two eyes, you get a, a, a you get a staring effect when you rotate two eyes. So in the most most scenarios, you have an eye that rotates, and this might be enough for the animator so give a control that does an FK rotation directly to the surface or you know two joints to rotate two eyes in from two different pivots but the reality is that um, this kind of control here only works on close-up shots when you when you start having multiple characters staring at stuff you it's actually better to provide an additional type of control where uh, the eyes are actually looking at I'm saying look at because this is a word that I've seen around when describing this behavior. But the constraint or the, the solver 
that uh, solves the rotation based on a position is it's called A in most packages and in Unreal, in Maya and Unreal as well. So the idea is that you have an object. Let's let's use this as an example. Let's say this is an object that moves around, and you want both eyes to constantly look at that. Okay, and so the joints needs to aim at that. So what we're going to build is a setup where we have this as our main IK control. Why am I calling IK? Uh, in in the most simple way I can explain. Aim, the aim constraint is a sort of IK solver. Every time we have a translation movement, I'm translating this object. And this translation solves somehow a rotation on somewhere. In this case, when I move this up, I said that I want this, these two eyes to rotate. Basically, this is some sort of IK solving but it's going to be implemented through an aim constraint. So one thing is to call the effect and one thing is to call you know, the proper node names. So there it is. So you want to have a, 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 an aim, a target, which will be this, this, this object here. And on top of that, you also want to be able to offset the rotation of the eye to achieve a much more subtle control, especially in close-ups. So let's jump into Unreal. So you can see that in my rig graph, I have um, a module I. And you can see also that the geometry I have applied, the, the also meta union shader. And it makes the eye look immediately photorealistic. And so we have a setup event in setup mode as usual and a forward solve in, in non-setup mode. The, this this uh, rig behaves as follows. I have an aim and you can see that the eye is looking at this object constantly. So even if we are far away, the animator can say, okay, always look at this object and the eye will behave properly. We we'll look at it. And I also have a control here that allows me to directly manipulate the rotation of the eye. And this is an offset, meaning that you know if I place this eye looking up, then I can keep using that. Why is this offset important? It's because even if when we build, it's always nice to have the eyes perfectly looking forward so we can figure out the axis. There is a thing that if, if, if the, the, the eyes usually when they stare at something, they're not perfectly straight. They're converging, usually. So there is a little bit of conversion. So it's always nice to give animator the ability to converge the eye into a certain point. And the, the, the stare will look more realistic. It's not always perfectly straight. So this is important. So how is this achieved? The first thing I want to point out is the control structure. There is a little bit of, uh, this is, this is, these are this is the skeleton from the head module. I only added two, uh, two eye joints, so these two eye joints. This eye, uh, this eye joint is skin to this eye, and the right eye is skin to this bone. The control structure is as follows. There is a free-to-move control, which is called LIK control, LIIK control. And then there is a space, which happens to be in the same position of this control. And then there is the FK control. It's as simple as that. So how, how the, let me check out that. How is this achieved? Let's have a look at the module I. Okay, so in, the, in, my, in my node, I have, I want to specify the I bone, which, have, which is going to be left I end. I want to know the FK control name, the IK control name, etc., etc. So, the first thing I'm doing is basically base, and this is a node that we I don't think we have seen yet. The thing, once I specify the FK control, because I want still to be able to move it, to move it around, uh, I, I don't want to manipulate this directly. I want to, through the aim constraint, I want to be able to manipulate its parent space. So that's why there is a space above. So once I get the FK control and the user has specified 
IFK control, it's my space. I'm getting the parent space. So here I'm getting the parent of it. So I'm passing this as an information and this node returns me this node here. That's the first thing. And am I in setup mode? If I'm set in, in setup mode, I'm taking the bone position of the of the eye, so this position here, and I'm snapping in translation the space that I ret uh, retrieved from here. So this this object here, now it's on top of this guy, translation wise. Then what I do is I have this basically this object is now on top of my eye here, and then how do I place this procedurally? Basically, this is this is this is where this attribute comes into play. I I K offset. The this the position of this object, the control offset, it's snapped on top of this position. Plus, so I'm getting the translation of the bone, like I did for this guy. Is this translation plus a vector that allows me to offset? So we know that it's going to be perfect. If I look at it from the front view, it's going to be perfectly aligned. In this case. I'm offsetting by 15 units. So if I put this to 20, it will move far away. Zero, one, two, three, four, 50. Okay, so this is how it gets procedurally placed. And remember, set up the event in my case, most of the time I'm, I'm procedurally placing controls. And that's it. So snapping this control into this position and snapping this control into this position. So am I not in setup mode anymore? Uh, the one thing I'm doing is checking the control visibility, FK control visibility, which basically only does that. By default, in order not to cl clutter the rig controls and the rigs, I'm only giving the main control, which is this one. And then, you know, the module allows us to have a, an additional secondary kind of um, visibility for this control here. So I'm saying set control visibility of, of, of this control based on this attribute. And then here's what I'm doing. So I've seen setup where um, you know the, the bone directly gets um, a, a name constraint directly to the target. In this case, I'm layering, I'm using you know, a concept of layering controls in order to achieve the aim that I want and the offset that I want. So the aim constraint is a type of constraints that it gets at a, um, you know, a, a, a node that you want to uh, drive with the aim constraint. In my case, this node is nothing else than the space. So I'm not driving the bone directly. I'm driving the space, which is driving the control, and the control is driving the bone. In this case, I can have a control that can move freely move, move around. The control will move the bone but also the control is being moved, its space is being moved by that through aim constraint. So the aim constraint is something that requires some attributes to be set. The first thing is, yes, what do you want to uh, drive with this aim constraint? The second thing is the axis you want to constrain. And this is, it's really similar to all the solvers that we've seen. In my case, it looks like this joint here, or the space, which is oriented in the same way, um, it wants to aim to that, so it, it needs to be, let me see what I've used here, it needs to be Y pointing forward, right? So you see this, this green green arrow there, green line. I, uh, so this, this would be the, the, the primary axis. This is exactly like a primary axis on any other solver we've seen. And then another important thing, and this one we cannot skip, is a secondary axis. So the secondary axis is something that um, it's some, sorry, I don't know what that noise was. So the secondary axis, the secondary axis is is something that in 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 the aim constraint, it's it's basically if we look at yeah the secondary target for the aim is also referred as pull vector or up vector. Meaning that you wanna, you, you wanna know, you wanna know what um, up vector this aim. So for the aim constraint, sorry, I'm getting really annoyed by this sound. Um, this this aim constraint points towards that through this axis. 
But in order to perform and compute properly when it, when it, when this thing spins around, it also needs to know the app axis. So you you would pass another another axis to say and specify this is your up vector. Okay, so this is how it works. And then after that, I'm simply saying, okay, project the position of this control in the standard way. So basically, I'm pairing constraining this control to this bar. Okay. So the end effect that we get is this. And again, I'm not constraining directly the bone. I'm rather aiming constraining a series of transforms here in order to achieve what I want, which gives you a little bit more flexibility. So it means that the bone can easily be manipulated by one control directly. Now let's have a look and let's do our unit test. Let's first of all duplicate this as, as controls. Let's put this under the space. Let's call this i. And let's call this something like that. And the only thing I need to do is take these two nodes. I'll take this one, duplicate it. Change the names. R -R -R. Duplicate this guy. Remove the setup and connect. So you can see that just by having a one I module, I, I can now um, have two eyes working at the same time, or many, many of those. That's why I'm using a single eye module rather than specifically write something for, uh, for creatures with two eyes. So if we move these two together, you can see that we start having a gaze effect, like a staring or look at effect. And if I want to have a more realistic thing, I should be able to converge the eyes a little bit and then preserve this offset. And there you have it. I hope this video makes sense and we terminated the I module.